I am going to discuss today about com compass surveying. The compass is a handheld instrument for determining the horizontal direction of a line with reference to a magnetic meridian. It is so constructed to allow a magnetized needles to swing freely on a pivot at the center of graduated circle and point towards the north. A compass, uh, surveyor's compass is an instrument for determining the horizontal direction of a line with reference to the direction of the magnetic needle. Okay, so what are the important or essential features of a compass? So we have the compass box, the sight veins, the magnetic needle. So the compass box is this, uh, this one, letter C. And then we have the sight veins. This is the sight veins, B. Okay, and then... Uh, of course, we have the magnetic needle, which is, okay, this one, this one, I mean this one, right? So, uh, this is the compass box, which you can see in a surveyor's compass. This compass needles, needle is actually uh, influenced or is displaced due to uh, the local attraction and the magnetic earth's magnetic field so that causes the the magnetic needle to dip no so that is why if you can see here uh this blue line supposed to be the the position of your needle but due to this this kind of attraction so in say local attraction these are uh, things like the power lines, railroad tracks, metallic belt buckles, etc., that can aff or that affect the direction of a compass needle points at any location. And also, the magnetic, the Earth's magnetic field, it's pulling you downward. No, it's pulling you down, and that angle that that is displaced. No, the displacement of that of that needle is what you call the angle of dip so there is a coil here this coil is used to balance the dip effect and keep it horizontal so this also makes or it can help the magnetic needle to stabilize or to counter the any effects that causes the needle to be you know to be dipped so when the compass traverse forms a closed figure, the interior angle at each station is computed from the observed bearings at that particular point. So the computed value, which is free from local attraction. Now, the sum of the interior angles of a closed polygon must be equal to n minus 2 times 180 degrees, in which n is the number of sides of the polygon. Now, since the error of sides observing a bearing is accidental it is assumed that to be distributed it is assumed to be distributed equally at each interior angle so what does it mean if it happens that uh, the computed interior angle uh, angles are not equal to the closed polygon uh, results no? in the formula okay that difference will have will need to be distributed uh, throughout the interior angles of that polygon. So, kung halimbawa, meron kayong limang interior angles sa polygon, you have to divide that difference into equal um, into five equal, equal values. Now, since the error of, I mean, the bearings are then adjusted from a line whose observed bearing is to, to be correct using the adjusted values, of each interior angle. So just to show you, this is a pocket compass. This is a surveyor's compass, and this is the transit compass. So co pocket compass, which is generally held in hand when bearings are observed, it used on a reconnaissance or other rough surveys. And surveyor's compass, which is mounted usually on a light tripod or sometimes on a Jacob's top, it's a point stick about 1.5 meters long. 
And this is the transit compass, a compass box similar to the surveyor's compass mounted on the upper or vernier plate of the engineer's transit. Okay, so these are some of the errors in sources of errors in compass work. We are get, going to, to talk about mostly on the magnetic variations in this, in this topic. Okay, what are the advantages of the compass? Compass is light and portable and it requires less time for setting up sighting and reading so an error in the direction of one line does not necessarily affect other lines of the survey the compass is especially adapted to running straight lines through woods and other places where obstacles are likely to interfere with the line of sight and uh, the disadvantages of this compass the use of the compass is it's not very accurate now, the needle is un unreliable, especially with the presence of local attractions, such as electric wires, metals, magnets, that may render it practically useless. Okay, let's go to the magnetic declination. Now, a, a magnetic declination is the horizontal angle measured from the geodetic meridian to the magnetic meridian. And the east decl declinations are considered positive and west declinations uh, negative and then the relationship between geodetic north magnetic north and magnetic declination is given by this equation that ge uh, geodetic azimuth is equals to magnetic azimuth plus the magnetic declination so let's say for example you have a true true north here this line is a true north and you have a magnetic uh, meridian going to the right or the east which is 5 degrees east. And a line is drawn. This is an azimuth. No? It's a magnetic azimuth, which has a measure of 143 degrees, 23 minutes, 35 seconds from the magnetic north. Now, if you are going to, to solve for the geodetic azimuth, get the magnetic azimuth plus the magnetic declination. Now, why plus? Because uh, it seems the magnetic declination is inclined towards the east, dapat magiging positive or ipa-plus mo yung magnetic declination. Now, kung ang magnetic declination mo ay leaning towards the uh, the west, so you have to subtract the magnetic declination here to get the geodetic azimuth. Now, in this case, the true azimuth is equals to 143 degrees, 23 minutes, 35 seconds, plus 5 degrees, or the total is 148 degrees, 23 minutes, and 35 seconds. So, ito yung um, ginagamit natin sa ating uh, general formula natin pagkuha ng geodetic azimuth. So, there are different variations in magnetic declinations. We have the secular variations, and then we have the daily variations, annual variation, and the irregular variations. This secular variation is the most important of the variations because there are no, uh, you know, there are no physical law uh, found to be, um, to predict the secular variations. Now, the past behavior can only be described by means of detailed tables and charts, uh, which they derive from the observations. So there are records which have kept at another country like London no, for, for centuries. Okay, So in retracing old properties run by compass or based on the magnetic meridian, it is necessary to allow for the difference in magnetic declination at the time of the original survey and at the present date. So, importante na pag halimbawa gusto mong uh, kunin ang boundary, no? na i-retrace mo yung old property, kailangan mong makuha ang magnetic declination, yung times na, sa original survey at yung present date. So, the difference is attributely attributed mostly to secular variation. And then we have the daily variation, daily variations of the magnetic needle's declination. And it causes it to swing through an arc and averaging approximately eight minutes no, sa United States. Okay, so we also have the annual variation. 
Okay, annual variation, this is a periodic swing. This peri periodic swing is less than one minute of arc and can be neglected. But it must not be confused with the annual change. Annual change is the amount of secular variation change in one year. And it can be shown on an isogonic maps. So uh, we have the isogonic maps. This is the isogonic maps. The illustrations of your annual change, secular variation change in one year. Uh -huh. So, this is shown in the isogonic maps. Irregular variation, these are unpredictable magnetic disturbances and storms uh, which can cause short-term irregular variations of a degree or more.